So for you to minimize Christians as being a bunch of narrow-minded fundamentalists who don't study, that's really, really sir, sir, incredibly sir, detrimental. Sir, nothing I'm saying here is remotely controversial among New Testament scholars. Right? Sure there are disagreements among Christians. Sure there are disagreements among Muslims. Sure there are disagreements among atheists. It tells you nothing about truth and reality. We have 25,000 manuscripts, handwritten manuscripts. Who is a more reliable source of information about who wrote a book? A person who lived 50 to 100 100 years after the writing or personally 2,000 years after the writing. In this case, if God has this an incredibly important message for humanity and comes down and presents himself in human form and sacrifices himself to himself and wants to preserve this narrative, why didn't God make sure that the Bible includes uh, eyewitness accounts from those individuals? We do have eyewitness accounts. Matthew was an eyewitness. The, the book of Matthew was the book of Matthew was not written by Matthew, nor was it written by an eyewitness. But I I was specifically referring. But I was specific. But I was specifically referring to the five hundred. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, baloney. Matthew wrote Matthew. No, he didn't prove that. But there's evidence supporting that. You just go okay. to Papias. You go to the early church fathers, and they wrote about Matthew writing Matthew, Mark writing Mark, Luke writing Luke, and John writing John. It's very clear. So here, I have my Bible here. If I go to the book of Matthew on the cover sheet, um, what's it going to say, the very first line? Why don't you read it for me? Sure. Although the first gospel is anonymous, the early church fathers were unanimous in holding that Matthew, one of the 12 apostles, was its author. So... The early church fathers say that it's Matthew, but the gospel itself, oh, there we go. The gospel itself is anonymous. Among New Testament scholars in Bible colleges, do they hold that Matthew, the apostle, wrote the book of Matthew? Who is a more reliable source of information about who wrote a book? A person who lived 50 to 100 years after the writing or a person who lived 2,000 years after the writing? In this case, the person who lived 2,000 years after the writing because the individual 50 to 100 years later or 100 to 200 years later doesn't have information to the full expanse of Christendom of what we've discovered about the writings in order to compare them. Just like the early historians who were not contemporaries but were potentially talking to contemporaries were writing about what they heard. They don't have the investigative ability to do it. They don't have the understanding of analyzing writing. Um, This is, I mean, nothing I'm saying here is remotely controversial among New Testament scholars. But It is very controversial. uh, No, it's controversial for people like you, not for New Testament scholars. Study Daniel Wallace down in in New Orleans. You can cite one or two if you want to, but if you go to earlychristianwritings.com, if you go... Writings of John Lennox, Professor Emeritus in Mathematics at Oxford University. Read the uh, first, read about the first woman president of MIT. Okay. Susan Hawkworth. She's a so, follower of so, Christ. These are brilliant so even if, people. So for you to minimize Christians as being a bunch of narrow-minded fundamentalists who don't can't study, that's really, really sir, incredibly, sir, incredibly sir, detrimental. Sir, I did not. Yes, you did. Cat, no, sir, I did not. That's a yes, blatant did. lie. I no, did not, not care. If you're just going to try and trash everything I say because I'm pointing out what New Testament scholars say and that you don't agree with them. And if I'm you're going to try and if you're, shut up, who just shut up, the ones. One shut up. But what you have to acknowledge is that Christianity at the individual level is made up of a bunch of different claims with, with that you guys don't all agree on. That has nothing to do with who's who's credulous, who's a buffoon, who's confused. Who I Christians don't know. I don't I have no... Christians disagree on a lot of things. So what on earth does that have to do with Jesus Christ? Nothing. Muslims disagree. That has nothing to do with Muhammad. The Shiites and Sunnis. Tells you nothing about Muhammad. Correct. Sure, there are disagreements among Christians. Sure, there are disagreements among Muslims. Sure, there are disagreements among atheists. Tells you nothing about truth and reality. Tells you that there are people who disagree. So what? What's your point? The point is the fact that people disagree about foundational things within Christianity mean that we need to get to a definition of what is true and what isn't true. Because two different Christians will tell you two different things and say that they're true. And they will disagree on those things. If we're going to say Christianity is true, why are those things different. I didn't bring this to, 
and I, I, I repeatedly pointed it out. First of all, I find it ridiculous and amusing. And I figured that you would very easily say, no, I don't buy into the notion that there's five generals of hell and two of them are responsible for lesbian sex. Um, but how, what criteria are you going to use to determine the truth of what you call Christianity that would exclude what she thinks it is? That Very simple. Whenever I read any book, to interpret accurately means to read in context and to respect literary style. And by reading in context and by respecting literary style, there is no way that you can come away from reading the New Testament saying the New Testament teaches their five generals in hell. Okay. Preposterous. And okay. that you even stoop to that level, Matt, is a stoop, sad thing. Stoop to anything. what level? I, 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 I'm really confused here, Cliff. I've asked for methodology. So I've asked for my methodology. Of an and you keep accusing me of stupid. If you're of an just going to be a jackass, well, just to be I will sure continue that we, to talk sure over you not every time you try to slander me because you won't defend your beliefs. Oh, I'm defending him all the time, Matt. No, you're not. You're asserting them. You're no, preaching. You I'm haven't provided a single bit of evidence or methodology. And all you've done every time I raise an issue is say that I'm stooping or I'm dabbling or I'm misrepresenting Christians as stupid. I'm sorry that you don't have a robust methodology that would that would shine and show the truth of Christianity while demonstrating that Islam is not true. But you don't. If you did, you would have presented it. I already have presented it to you. The resurrection of Christ is it's not a fact. Evidence. Now, who's interrupting who, Matt? The I'm interrupting you. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is overwhelming evidence that Christ is reliable. The evidence of a sinless life that he lived. as He could look his enemies in the face in John chapter 8 and say, which one of you can prove me guilty of sin? And his enemies were silent. The apostle John, who knew him intimately for three years, could write, in him is no sin. When you read the Sermon on the Mount, those are the teachings of an ethical genius. Jesus was an ethical genius. Jesus was an ethical you know, genius. He died on a cross, loving and forgiving his enemies. You're confronted by a guy who taught an amazingly high ethical standard and lived up to that standard. The evidence for Christ is so robust, it's embarrassing. There is no one who comes even close to Christ in credibility, in trustworthiness. And you know it, if you think about it. No, Whether sir, I don't. And you can stop claiming what I know, because that's also dishonest. What, well, I, what, what, what I find, if you with an open mind, look at it. You okay. know, so, come so now, to now your explanation is that I'm, I'm just not doing it with an open mind. W will you ever stop addressing me and what you think of me and actually present evidence for a resurrection? Fine. The evidence for the resurrection is he really died, and a Roman soldier took a spear and jammed it in the How side. You know that, and an issue of watery serum flowed out, separated from the. Side of Christ, we read in the Gospel of John. He was dead. They took his body off the cross. They anointed it with perfume, wrapped it in burial cloth, and laid it in the tomb, not a secret hideout tomb, a very well-known tomb, the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. His disciples dispersed in disillusionment. There was no Passover plot. And three days later, he appeared risen from the dead to a group of, group of women. And then over a period of 40 days, he appeared to over 500 people. And those people, most of, many of whom were willing to die for what they claimed to have seen. The dead Christ. The 500? The and for the past 2,000 years, people have claimed to have met this Jesus Christ and that he has changed their lives. Preeminent among them would be the Saul of Tarsus, who met Christ on the road to Damascus and had an incredible conversion experience and followed Christ. So there's overwhelming evidence that Christ was dead historically, and historically he rose from the dead. It, is any of that overwhelming evidence that you think you just cited not from the Bible? Yes, I, be, I listed already. See, you're not listening. I listed Wait, no, the names. No, I sir. With Clement Bishop of Antioch. Ignatius None of those people are attesting to the truth of anything that you just said. Those people are attesting to the fact that people believed those things no, and made those claims. Eyewitnesses. No, no, sir. Those, those individuals are not themselves eyewitnesses. That's correct. But they talked to the eyewitnesses. You, you have no way of demonstrating that. But, but hang on. Let's go ahead and assume that Matthew was an eyewitness. How do we know that Matthew is an accurate reporter of the facts that he supposedly witnessed? First of all, you explore his document that he wrote carefully, checking such things as Greek manuscripts, checking such things as internal consistency, checking such things as archaeological support of the place names listed in the document. Of the then place names? You go to other documents. Archaeological evidence of the place names is corroborating evidence? Yes. 
So, so is the existence of New York corroborating evidence for Spider-Man? No, but it oh, is corroborating thanks. evidence that I was born in New York City in 1954. No, it's actually not. The, yes, exi it the existence of New York is not corroborating evidence that you were born there. It, just like the existence of New York is not evi corroborating course, evidence that I was right, born it there. Supports, it supports the claim that I make that I was born at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. The fact that the, New York City is archaeological. The existence of a hospital does not corroborate the claim that you were born there. Statement that I was born in New York City. If there was no New York City, then you'd have good reason to question. Correct. No, Correct. But you are committing you are committing a particular fallacy where you are reversing something. The fact that the, if there was not a Presbyterian hospital in New York City, then your claim that you were born there would clearly not be the case. But the existence of that hospital does not in any way demonstrate that you were born there. Just like the existence of Mars doesn't demonstrate that I was born on Mars if I were to claim that. If you claim that you were born on Mars, the first question I would ask is, is Mars real? The second question I would ask is, is there any evidence that anybody has traveled to Mars and back? But to, the beginning point is, is Mars real? So, is Bethlehem, Nazareth, Jerusalem, Rome real, or are they fictitious places? As far as I know, they are real places, and as far as I know, they are contemporary places with the time of the story. So what? So then you keep on going and ask, get more specific. Okay, what is the evidence that what this eyewitness wrote back in the first century has been carefully preserved today? No, 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 no. Whether or not what they wrote in the first century has been carefully preserved is irrelevant to whether or not what they wrote is accurate. I first need to know, do I have what they wrote? If it's been totally perverted and changed, that affects the issue very profoundly. Well, considering we have no originals, you can't know how much it has changed. You can know that the copies uh, and intermixed, this is where the modern experts will know more than someone did in the first or second century because they have more texts to compare to try to get back to determine what our oldest and best manuscripts are in comparison to what could have or likely was the original. But we don't know. But in any case, even if we were to assume that the version we have is almost identical or close enough to what it originally said, that in no way demonstrates the truth of those original claims. I need to know regarding the Quran, the teachings of Buddha, the writings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, do we have the manuscript evidence today that gives us any degree of certainty that we really have what they wrote? Today, the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we have over 5,000 Greek manuscripts or pieces of manuscript dated from the 2nd through the 10th century AD, all agreeing to an infinitesimal degree. Before Gutenberg's printing press, we have 25,000 manuscripts early manuscripts, handwritten manuscripts, 25,000. And the study of those manuscripts show that we have an amazingly accurate Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are in Latin Vulgate, in Ethiopic, Coptic, Armenian, as well as Greek. So the evidence is we have a very accurate presentation of what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote. Now read it and ask yourself, does the evidence of the way he lived, taught, died, and rose from the dead point to Jesus being a fraud? If it does, reject him. Or does do, he? Do you think I have it? I, I have read it. I have read it. I have read it. I think being reliable. I have read it. I think you are convinced that I've read it. Uh, I have not reached the same conclusion you did, in part because the number of manuscripts or copies that we have is a testament to their popularity and how strongly people believed. It is not in any way a testament to how accurate they recorded events. When they all agree to an infinitesimal degree, they it don't. is serious evidence that they are accurate. No, sir, that is simply it's not true. Accurate. Every, I can, okay. I, no, I can pull every copy. Yes, it is. I, no, no, sir, no, no, sir, it's not. And if you'd let me finish instead of trying to fucking no, no, run no, over me like that. You interrupted me most recently, Matt, so hold, don't, don't right, just to be sure. Right. No, sir, sure I we sat don't go here off quietly the, while you went on a topic. long spiel. I can take every copy of Harry Potter and they will agree to an infinitesimal degree. Does that mean that what they say is true? No. But it means that's you have my an point. Copy of Harry that's Potter. my point. And your argument is the fact that we have many manuscripts that agree to an infinitesimal degree, which is not quite true. 
but they do it agree is. strongly. Yes, it is. Very your, your argument that you just made was that this is strong evidence that what they say is true. And that is simply fallacious as is, demonstrated you by your own John response John just a moment ago. John, I can't hear you. I, I can't hear you if was, I'm still talking. I, hold on one sec. Just to be sure.